Welcome back to Marty's Toy Box. For today's video, we have a AEW Revolution recap. And let me tell you, the pay-per-view started off slow. Then it picked up a lot. And I'll explain later, but after the main event, it just went downhill completely. We had lots of surprises during this pay-per-view. But anyways, let's get straight into it. On the buy-in, we had Thunder Rosa and Rio versus Britt Baker and Reba. So... What happened here is like an hour or two before the pay-per-view started, it was announced that Reba will not be able to compete because of a quote-unquote injury, and she will have a mystery um, opponent later on. So when this started, um, her replacement was Macchiato. Ma I've, I'm probably butchering her name. I'm probably going to butcher a lot of names from here, and I do apologize for that. But her replacement was Macchiato. And so when the match started... The match was good overall, and it was it was kind of slow, but picked up a little bit, little bit of the pace. And how the match ended was um, Reba hit Thunder Rosa with a crutch while the referee was distracted, and then Dr. Britt Baker pinned her for the win. Reba, of course, was faking the injury. There is a picture of Macchiato, and then them posing after the match. Britt Baker doing her signature, flipping off the camera, and that was not the greatest match, but that was the worst match of the night. Anyways, next up, the show kicks off with the Young Bucks versus Chris Jericho and MJF. Um, Chris Jericho and MJF were demolishing a lot of the match, and then the Young Bucks picked up pace and started winning. And then we saw um, Jericho sneak a hit with a baseball bat, um... And then it allowed uh, MJF to hit the Heat Seeker, um, but the match action, of course, kicked out. Um, then Chris Jericho later in the match would have hit a Judas effect on Nick Jackson, but he moved out of the way and he ended up hitting Wardlow. So that caused a little bit of distraction. And then the Young Bucks ended up hitting the Meltzer Driver on Chris Jericho to score the pinfall and retain their AEW Tag Team Championships. Next up was the Casino Tag Team Battle Royal. So this was sort of all over the place, but I'm going to give a little rundown of it. So we had all the teams enter, and then this was the elimination. So we had the Sidell Brothers, eliminated by Santana and Ortiz. Then the Gun Club, eliminated by QT Marshall. And that made um, QT Marshall... Uh, Sorry, I kind of just lost track of words there. Anyways, QT Marshall eliminated um, the Gun Club, which is part of the Nightmare family. And that made Dustin Rhodes upset. And QT Marshall ended up getting angry and just eliminated himself. Which starts possibly a heel turn. I'm not too sure. Then we had the pretty picture eliminated. And then Santana and Ortiz got eliminated by Jungle Boy. Very surprising. Um, then the Varsity Brothers got eliminated, and then Dark Order, and then Dustin Rhodes got eliminated, so the Nightmare, the Natural Nightmares were out. Then Bear Country was eliminated, then Private Party, then The Butcher and The Blade, then SCU, and then John Silver and Alex Reynolds. And then Pac got eliminated as well. So we were left down to the final two being, um, Pac, or not Pac, Pac got eliminated. So we, the final two was Ray Phoenix and Jungle Boy, as you can see right here. And Ray Phoenix uh, ended up eliminating Jungle Boy, meaning Pac and Ray Phoenix will get a AEW World Title Shot, World Tag Team Title Shot in the near future, maybe on a Dynamite or at Double or Nothing, which was announced as their next pay per view. Anyways, I'm sorry, I lost track of words there, and I apologize for that. Next up was Shida and Mizunami. And this match was pretty good overall, and Shida ended up getting the pinfall victory. And there is a picture of like the, them fighting. But anyways, after the fact, Nyla Rose came out and started demolishing... Um, she started demolishing Shida after Mizunami's match, after their match, I guess. I'm really lost track of words tonight, guys. I really do apologize. It's late. I haven't slept. Anyways, back to the show. Now the Rose attacked uh, Sheeta after the match, and that started a whole fight. And then Britt Baker came out and started beating her up as well, then kind of stared down with Nyla Rose. And then we saw um, Thunder Rosa and a few other women come out to save them, um, to save Sheeta from the attack, and then we went away. 
Next up, we saw Matt Hardy versus Hangman Adam Page. Match was really good overall, and towards the end, we saw Private Party come out on the apron trying to distract Hangman Page, and then we saw all of Dark Order come out and take out Private Party, and then at one point in the match, Matt Hardy had Hangman Page on the apron and pushed him off, and Dark Order caught him, lifted him up back on the apron, and then he hits the buckshot lariat for the pinfall, and after the match, we saw them all celebrating hinting that Hangman Adam Page will be joining Dark Order. Who knows, though? They've been doing a lot of random stuff like that with um, Hangman Page. Anyways, next up, we do have Miro and Kip Sabin versus Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. So, before the match even started, Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor were doing a promo, and then Miro ended up coming back with Chris Sabin, or not Chris Sabin, Kip Sabin. And attacking them backstage. And the match then started with just only Chuck Taylor in the ring. Orange Cassidy laid out in the back. Versus um, Chris, Kip Sabin and Miro. And Chuck Taylor was getting demolished the whole match. And then Orange Cassidy come out. And like he kind of stumbled out and fell on the entrance stage. But it was all a ruse. Because when Miro walked over towards them. Orange Cassidy popped up. Jumped off the stage and did a orange punch to Miro, and then he got tagged in the ring, and they kept fighting, but the end of the match ended with Miro doing his submission move to Orange Cassidy, and Orange Cassidy did tap out. We saw um, Miro accidentally hit Kip Saban's wife, Penelope Ford, off the apron, so um, Kip Saban was like helping to her while the match ended. Sort of a spot that might cause heat in the future with Miro hitting her, but who really knows? Overall, not a bad match. Next up, we did have the Face of the Revolution ladder match, and the sixth opponent, the sixth entry was All Ego Ethan Page, as me and Wick did predict in our AEW Revolution predictions. So Ethan Page was in the match, and towards the beginning of the match, we saw Cody Rhodes um, get hit on the arm. And he got walked back, and he was up towards the entrance and stuff, and personally, I believed he was at seriously injured. He was sort of in the entrance, entrance circles, but we saw lots of doctors tending to him and like testing his arm out, so I was believing that he was actually injured. Um, but towards the end of the match, he came out, started fighting again, and I did not expect this ending at all, but the winner of the Face of the Revolution ladder match is Scorpio Sky. And something that was funny in this match is they had to grab a brass ring, and this was the ring. Looks like the coin from Sonic, or a donut, I don't know, but this was sort of really stupid right here, um, to have something hang above the ring. Could have been something different, like a contract, something along those lines, but no, it was a big brass ring that looked really stupid. I was not expecting Scorpio Sky to win this match. I assumed that he would be just a guy for spots. But overall, not a bad match, and Cody Rhodes is safe. Thought he was going to happen, but no. Scorpio Sky did win the match. Next up, the Paul White makes his big announcement regarding AEW. There was lots of speculation. People were saying it could have been RVD, Mark Henry, CM Punk, which was stupid, uh, Brock Lesnar, so many people. And the time, the reason you probably all clicked on this video, the big revolution signing was Christian. He's going by Christian Cage in AEW. I was expecting this, but not expecting this. We saw Christian at the 2021 Royal Rumble, and after the fact, we haven't seen him since. So I was thinking he would have been fighting if he went under contract with WWE because he is good to compete. And we did not see him at all. So when we saw this um, announcement, I had a little bit of hope and thanks thoughts that it was Christian, and that was correct. He did. He, they kind of rushed it, honestly. He walked out to the ring, signed the contract, and left. It felt way too rushed. Paul White was not on the show whatsoever. Not too sure why. Maybe they were in a crunch of time. But Christian is all elite. It really sucked, because I was expecting to see Edge and Christian reunite, really hoping to see that. And it's also funny as well that Matt Hardy and Christian are in AEW, 
But in WWE, you have Jeff Hardy, and then you have Edge. Kind of weird. I mean, not weird, but kind of funny overall. But it's not the worst. I think we will see Christian compete later on in the pay-per-view, or pay-per-views on Dynamite. Who knows? Next up, we did have the street fight, which was Brian Cage and Ricky Starks, Team Taz versus Sting and Darby Allin. This match was insane. Let me tell you guys. So, Sting... Okay, it was a cinematic match. It was at an offstage site with, like, a warehouse, it looks like, almost, like a abandoned building. And there was lots of spots in this match. But the match kicked off with... Brian Cage just demolishing Darby Allen, bringing him all over the place and demolishing him. And then in the ring, we had Sting and Ricky Starks. 99% of the match was Brian Cage and Ricky Starks and like Darby Allen fighting. Sting was not really a lot in the match. And when he was in the match, it was really disappointing. He was doing punches on Ricky Starks throughout the match, and it, they were so fake. You can tell he was missing his face wildly. Sting's got a little bit in him, but not a lot. So here's a picture of like the beginning of the match. We also saw Sting with the bat against Ricky Starks. And in this spot right here, Ricky Starks said, You're only good with the bat, so Sting threw it up really high into this little windowsill. And we will see that come in play later in the match. But anyways, we saw Team Taz come in. And start demolishing Darby Allen and Sting. And then we saw them, Brian Cage, start like, they started swinging Darby Allen. So, like, one of them had his arms, the other one had his legs, and they started swinging him and threw them through, threw him through this glass door. Um, this glass door did shatter, really. Of course, it would shatter. And then I think it was breakaway glass because we saw Darby Allen not a few minutes later. But so we saw um, Sting take out. Darby or er, Sting take out Team Taz with a bat that Darby Allen threw down, and then there was a little drop down in the middle of the um, place, and there was two. Um, it was surrounded by um, a border, and Sting put Brian Cage over that, and we saw Darby Allen jump from like two stories down onto Brian Cage, and it seemed like an insane spot. Darby Allen could have got seriously hurt. But anyways, we saw the match end in the middle of the ring. They had like a broken, abandoned down ring in there. And we saw the match end with Sting just doing his finisher in the middle of the ring. So many high spots throughout the match, and it ended with a death drop. So, not the greatest. But now, it is time for the main event. Kenny Omega versus John Moxley, an exploding barbed wire death match. So, here's Moxley's interest. You can see the ring ropes are wrapped around in barbed wire. And there's like two little barbed wire uh, boards in these two um, corners. And I was, I had high hopes for this match. Exploding barbed wire death match. Sounds insane. I was completely wrong. So the first person who got hit on the ropes, it was this rope right here, was John Moxley. And all that happens is like little pyros shoot out, not at the rest or anything, towards like the crowd. And it doesn't even contact with the wrestler whatsoever. It's really weird. And then we saw Moxley get busted open. Shocker, shocker. Happened many times. It's, I can't remember a pay-per-view when John Moxley could not get busted open. Um, in this match, we or this more pictures, but after this, we saw John Moxley um, hit Kenny Omega against this rope over here and then drop kicking him back into it. Pyro not hitting him whatsoever. Nothing exploded onto him. And then we saw a really cool kick out by John Moxley. So Kenny Omega hit his finisher and John Moxley was laid out. One, two. Moxley puts his feet up against the rope, ex making the explosions, quote unquote explosions, go off, stopping the count. But he didn't really kick out. It was a street fire, so none of that mattered. And then we saw John Moxley hit the Death Rider onto these boards, and these were what were supposed to go off after the match. I thought I was making big explosion and stuff. No, it was Pyro shooting out. Basically, there was one right here and one right here. We saw Pyro getting shot out. It was really disappointing. Towards the end of the match, we saw the Good Brothers come out and start attacking Moxley, but Moxley demolished them with a barbed wire baseball bat. And then, probably the most insane spot of the night. Um, so, Carl Anderson 
Chrono Cross, and that's the rename. But anyways, he handed Kenny Omega a barbed wire bat. I thought, it's just barbed wire. No, it was an exploding barbed wire um, bat. And this picture right here just looks incredible, in my opinion. He hit Moxley with it. It exploded. And then towards the end of the match, we saw, um, towards the end of the match, we saw Hangman Page, um, not Hangman Page, Kenny Omega getting attacked by Moxley, and then the Good Brothers come back in, set up a chair, and Kenny Omega does the one-winged angel on top of the chair. So, this is after the match. The Good Brothers handcuff Moxley, Kenny Omega just demolishes him, barbed wire to the head, to the, um, stomach, many things. And then this countdown starts. Starts from a minute and goes down. So Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers escape the ring, go to the back, and we see Eddie Kingston run out because the timer gets down really low. It's at six seconds here. Eddie Kingston comes out, tries to like wake Moxley up and get him out of the ring, but he couldn't. So um, Eddie Kingston ends up covering John Moxley with his body when this timer went to three. And I was expecting ring collapse, big explosion, super insane spot. No. There's Eddie Kingston covering Moxley right there. Seemed like something huge was going to happen, and then this happens. Little sp like sparklers, Pyro almost starts coming out of the ring pose, and then this was the explosion. Four things of Pyro shooting off. That was the explosion. That is all. I was hoping something huge, maybe ring collapses and stuff. No, just Pyro exploding, and then... After the fact, we saw Eddie Kingston selling it for some odd reason, knocked out cold, laying there in the ring, and we saw doctors turning into John Moxley, and the <laughs> so many fans are upset by this, and me being one of them, I am super upset about this. I was expecting something huge, but I think that writes Moxley off of TV until after his kid's born, off of AEW television. I don't think we'll see him for... Maybe one to two months. I'm not too sure when Renee Young is due to have her kid. But anyways, that is my AEW Revolution recap. I'm sorry I got mixed up a lot during this. I'm super tired right now. Um, overall, I'll give the pay-per-view a 7.5 out of 10. We saw some cool spots and stuff. But honestly, the ending of this just ruined the whole pay-per-view. And... So many fans are pissed off at AEW, and I think they might have, they might lose a couple of years from this, honestly. And they hyped it up so much, and this is all we got. The positive, though, is Christian Stein. It wasn't some stupid joke that, like, oh, Paul White um, is the mystery person or anything like that. We saw Christian. Really good signing by them. I'm excited to see what he does in the future. And also, a match was announced for Wednesday. Um, Scorpio Sky versus Darby Allin for the TNT title on Wednesday Night's Dynamite, but that is all I do have for you guys for this video, I hope you all did enjoy, and I will see you guys next time.